jerking these things, like the, the blades never quit. So like you can kind of get after them like a jerk bait, so to speak. Because every time I pull this thing, there's just a ton of water being oh, pushed yeah. forward. You see that? Yeah. yeah. So like if I just if I just have it sitting here and I just barely pull it up, <laughs> you can see that like it's just got a ton of water being pushed forward. You know? So. The way that I'm working these, like if a guy's like use just in general using a straight retrieve, that's that's typically if I'm like trying to count it down on a weed edge or like get it like deeper. But you'll rarely see me like straight retrieve this thing. I think if you kind of sell yourself short, this is my number nine, um, which is a mid size, and offer it in the seven, nine, and eleven, and we're working kind of all three of them the same way. So. Basically what I'll do is you know, cast it out and as soon as it hits the water start reeling and just kind of getting after it a few pumps maybe some speed you know slow things down these will basically run like almost right on top of the surface too without the blades um, and then kind of in the figure eight a guy can hang that high outside and they don't quit you know and just kind of varying varying speed and ripping them and one thing real important with these two is they don't really have lift. Um, so like as soon as that bait lands, you want to like get on it and start reeling. And I think that's like the biggest trigger because if we're counting, if we're counting on the fish being right where the bait's landing, if we want to engage a fish right away, like just kind of like getting that, playing that cat and mouse game with the fish. And as a bucktail, you don't really have to or for the revolution as a bucket, you don't have to worry about the blades quitting. So like slowing it down, speeding it up, you know, a guy can like basically blow them out and they uh, will run on the surface too. Um, so we're watching Mike work this thing. If you watch that bucktail coming in, to me, it's running scared. I mean, this right. thing is... Like it's a bait trying to yeah. get away. I mean, if you think about these suckers, and you watch these suckers, if you're just dragging them and they're just swimming, that's kind of like a bucktail coming in vanilla. This thing is running like it's nervous. I mean, this, this bait looks nervous and scared when it comes in. Mm -hmm. And then the other important thing, why don't you talk a little bit about high outside. Is everybody, like as far as the figure eight goes, that high outside part of the figure eight is important because that's probably where you're going to get bit, I don't know, 80% of the time right. in the figure eight. Like, let's say a fish is on it right now, a lot of times what I'll do is dip the rod tip down in my L turn, if it doesn't eat it there, hang that high outside loop. A lot of times they'll eat it on that high outside. You, you'll you rarely see me do like, like a classic figure eight like this and then back down and then high outside. A lot of times what I end up doing is I'm doing like big ovals. I come in with an L turn, I hang that high outside if she doesn't eat it. I'll pull it away from her down here and go high outside again. Pull it down, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. kind of like and down, lot of, down, lot of down in the boat is natural because these rods are so big, but you're also like if, if you're coming in, come in for me real quick. Like you're coming in, say you see a fish right here, okay, it doesn't eat, now speed up and drop the rod. You're almost like taking it away from them, saying, all right, you didn't want it there, all right, we're mm -hmm. gonna feed you high outside. So you take it away, drop it down, so then all of a sudden their mentality is, oh shit, there it goes. And then they, they, they're focused, instead of looking right at the boat and the trolling motor and the prop and everything else, they drop their focus to this thing getting away, they go down, and then it turns and hangs high outside and that's their and opportunity for the bite. And a lot of times too, they they primarily feed up. Mm -hmm. So like if you got it, if if they're on it and they don't eat it, like on the L turn, you dip it down. They kind of lose sight of it, I think, and they're like, "Where is it?" Sure. Next time they see it, it's all here up high, and they're like, "Oh, there it is," and then they can close that gap. And like a lot of times too, if I got a fish that is maybe about to eat it over here. I don't want her to eat it when I'm like fully extended over here. So I'll pull it down away from her again mm -hmm. and then resell that high outside and try and get her to eat it there. Again. Because if talk a little bit about hook set. I mean, right. if one bites at your feet, yeah. you pretty much just to kind of have to hang on. If they bite out there, 
I always have a better position to set the hook. I always tell people like it's better to do nothing than to like rush the hook set. Because a lot of times they bite it and we're just like keeping tension. So like it, but you know, a lot of guys say, <coughs> should I set the hook the opposite way the fish did it? Well, yes and no. <laughs> My theory after reviewing, you know, hundreds of fish being caught and missed and lost, um, so let's say I hang it high outside and the fish comes up from behind it and bites it from behind. I'm not gonna, like, if I hang it here, it bites it from behind, I'm not gonna set back this way. If she bites it from behind, she's gonna set the hook like in a downward motion the way that her head is, and I'm gonna start walking this way with the fish. So, so Mike and I have, here, just kind of keep doing a little like that. So Mike and I have really like spent a lot of time talking about this and and so a lot of times yeah setting back towards the tail is is a real popular thing to do and it's not it's not the wrong thing to do but what we've kind of found like different fish will eat differently at times and a lot of these fish like these Minnesota fish so do like a so like if a lot of times they'll cut the corner they'll come in here they'll pivot and they'll turn out and they'll eat high outside out here. So if you set back into them, you're hooking them in the left corner of the mouth. Mm -hmm. Like on Lake of the Woods, for instance, a lot of these fish will stay behind the bait, make the same shape as the bait, and they'll actually eat from the outside in, come back eating you. with the right side of their mouth, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So they'll kind of see up on the bait from the outside in, and then when you go to set back into it, you're actually like peeling it across their mouth. So, in that case, like, you know, a lot of times if you're out here, rather than trying to come back towards their tail, if you just, if you can keep the rod down in the water and just keep the pressure, you'll... Keep the tension on them. The biggest thing is keeping the rod down. Keep the rod in the water and just try to make the, just try to load the rod up, essentially. If that rod's loaded up, then you, you're, you're driving hooks. And if you can keep that rod bent, without forcing them around or lifting them up. The last thing you want to do is lift up. The last thing you want to do is try to hook them in the upper palate. Upper palate is concave and it's toothy. It's really, really hard to drive a hook into that. So you want to get them in the corner or even in that like lower mandible, that lower jaw. So, I mean, we think and talk way too much about this, I think. Yeah. <laughs> but it is, it does seem like there is a difference with fish that will stay behind the bait and fish that will come in, pivot, and go out and cut that corner. Mm-hmm. Yep.